Hello my loves, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is your girl Kinesthetic with the Kinesthetics and I'm here with you guys today with a new video. So today's video is going to be another chit chat get ready with me. You guys really loved the last one, you guys showed me so much love on my last chit chat, get ready with me. So if you guys didn't see that video, I will link it in the end screen so y'all could go ahead and watch that one after y'all watch this one, okay? Because y'all have to be caught up with everything that is going on. So in today's video, I wanted to do a chit chat with you guys as I did my makeup and got ready about just different things that I've been having on my mind. I have definitely been journaling way more this month compared to the rest of the year I and mean, i feel like that helps me get my thoughts together and really realize like what i want to share with you guys so yeah i really hope you guys enjoy before we get started make sure you guys subscribe to my youtube channel hit that red subscribe button down below and join the family because we're doing big things over here okay join the family it's free 99 give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to drop a comment down below after you guys watch this entire video and without further ado let's go ahead and get started so we are doing my makeup today i want to focus on the chit chat so i will go ahead and link all of the products that i'm using today down below in the description box so make sure you guys check that out if you guys are interested in any of the products that y'all see me use to you know get my face together so let's go ahead and get started my face is a little dry so i'm gonna start off with this hydrating primer I believe that everyone has insecurities. Whether we say we do or not, whether we display it or not, everyone has insecurities. Insecurities about external things, internal things, past experiences that we've had, how we were raised, X, Y, and Z. There's so many different factors that contribute to insecurities, but I am a fond believer that everyone has insecurities. Point blank, period. But girl, dating has made me realize that as young adults, we have so many insecurities based on past experiences that we are unhealed from. Like we have all like been through stuff when it comes to dating, right? But a lot of us aren't putting in the work that we need to put in to become better people. So through dating, I've realized like a lot of these men are really insecure and insecure about different things. I've had experiences with men that have displayed insecurities based on their past experiences. So. In general, I'm the type of girl, I'm not gonna sit here and text you all day. I can't. I cannot call you all day, I cannot text you all day. First of all, what are we gonna talk about if we texting all day? Let me know, because I'm an interesting person, but I'm not that much of an interesting person where I have something to speak to you about each and every minute of the day. Girl, no. Boy, no. So, I'm not, I don't wanna say a heavy communicator because I do communicate, but I'm not sitting here texting and calling you all day. That's just something that I can't do. And I feel like through dating, a lot of men don't really know how to deal with that because their first assumption is, oh, what you doing that you not answering your phone? What you doing that you not texting me? And it's like, I have a job. I actually have two jobs. <laughs> I have my nine to five and then I have my personal brand. So between all of that, I don't really have time. And I feel like that's hard for people to understand, especially when they're not as busy as you are or their responsibilities don't require as much time as yours does it's just it's 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 just yeah so i feel like that leads them to an accusatory tone or accusatory phase where it's like okay what you doing that you're not answering and it's like first of all we're just dating <laughs> we're just dating so you have to understand that whether i'm not responding to you because i'm working or whether i'm not responding to you because i'm with somebody else we're just dating we're just dating and maybe it's my definition of dating or what i expect out of dating like while i'm in a dating phase my eggs are not all in one basket that's number one number two is i still have a life i'm not pausing my life in order to entertain people or in order to pursue like dating i'm life still goes on bills still have to get paid okay so that's one bucket of insecurities the other is there's nothing stronger than a black woman who has her own job, who makes her own money, who does not need to depend on you, but can choose to depend on you. Baby, that combination right there will tear a man down, okay? We'll have a man jumping out of his panties. <laughs> because I feel like men aren't used to that 
or maybe I don't know what it is but I'm just like why are you so phased by a black woman who has her own stuff going on if anything you should want that you should want that but a lot of men are just like no it makes them not feel as masculine because I don't know if it just doesn't give them room to be as masculine as they want to be or if they just feel like you can leave me at any time like I don't know what exactly they have against it but men are not here for black women who have their own things going on and that is just my personal opinion based on my experiences so that also leads to men being insecure because they feel like oh she has a lot going on or she has more than me going on and then it's just like okay insecurity kicks in so i get it a lot of us are traumatized by our past experience let me do my eyebrows and then i'll be back <laughs> i do feel like a lot of us are still like traumatized and are still healing or have scars from our past relationships and I'm saying us because I'm included too. Like you guys know if you guys watch my videos that I am in therapy, but therapy isn't a uh, snap your fingers and everything is, is okay. So I am going through the process of like, you know, healing and getting over past experiences and learning how I should move on during this phase of my life, given like, you know, the tools the resources and the space I'm at in my life right now. But I do feel like people who go into relationships or situations or dating 100% unhealed, they definitely tend to deflect their insecurities onto the person that they are dating. And I do not believe that is fair at all. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm in therapy because I told you guys in my last video that when I am in my next relationship, I want to have the healthiest mindset that I can have. I don't want to go into my next relationship with these same insecurities or the same level of insecurities as I have had in previous relationships, if that makes sense. There are some insecurities that we have that I don't think will ever go away. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, this is what it is and it is what it is, okay? Certain insecurities we can't get over, but I think what's important is how we deal with us having those insecurities so at this point in my life i'm really not expecting anyone to come to me fully healed but i am expecting somebody to come to me who has insecurities as we all do but is on the process of putting in the work to fix that or to become better or to feel more comfortable or to feel more confident i may have to add a tense therapy as a box on my checklist because at this point girl something's in the water and i don't know what it is because i'm just like and it's like as soon as i meet people now their insecurities are like forefront like it's not like oh i have to do some digging or i have to have conversations with you like they're just here like they're on a platter waiting for me at the front door next to a glass of champagne that is what it gives and i'm just like wow i didn't even have to go anywhere to see it like i didn't have to ask nothing to see it I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. So yeah, along the lines of insecurities, especially when it comes to dating, I am a fan believer in being unapolog unapologetically you. That is something that I have had no problem doing. Like I don't change who I am depending on who I'm around or where I am. Like I'm always me. I'm always Kendra. Point blank. Period. So when it comes to dating, I feel like a lot of times we feel like we have to bend and shape ourselves in order to meet someone's requirements or expectations. But baby, let me tell you this. If you ever feel that way in a situation, that situation is not a situation for you. And I've had to learn that the hard way because we want things to work so bad sometimes. We're like, this is it. This is my husband. This is a situation. Like, this is set from God. Like, this is absolutely perfect. Whatever, whatever. You start putting stuff together in your head like yep we're gonna get married we're gonna do this do, 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 do. but meanwhile you're losing yourself you're using you're losing your values you're losing your dignity you're losing everything that is basically you in order to please someone else and i never want to feel that way in any relationship whether it be a friendship or romantic relationship family whatever the case is i never want to feel like i'm bending and mending myself in order to fit in someone's box or in order to please someone like i am who i am i'm a little bit of ratchet with a, a a splash of professionalism okay that's me i say what's on my mind i dress the way that i want to dress i go to places i want to go 
and I never want to feel like I'm changing that because of someone else. Granted, I could want to change those things for myself, right? I could want to change the way I dress. I could want to change the way I wear my hair. I could want to change the way I carry myself, but it depends on the intentions of you doing it. Like if you're doing it for yourself, cool. If you're doing it because that will contribute to you being a better person, cool. But if you're doing it because somebody tells you, I don't like when you dress like this, or I don't like when you go here, or I don't like when you do this, that's fine, you could not like it, but you're not the one for me. I wanted to present a piece of evidence, okay? From my sis, Shensia. Cause she has this song, which I love. It's called Rebel. <laughs> And in the song, she says, No, I'd rather be alone. Can't go home, me down. What to do? Where to go? Off the dress in a puppy show. Rubber from day one. Shang Yang, if you want to have a business in my last month. Okay, y'all yeah, get the point. But basically, in the song, she's saying, like, Nobody's gonna tell me who I need to be. That song resonates so much with me because I'm like, That is me. Like, I really don't need anything from these people. I'd rather be by myself if it comes down to that. And also with me, I told you I've been single for so long that at this point, I'm just like, I refuse to settle. I refuse to settle. I refuse to just be with someone to be with someone. I'd rather be by myself. That is just me. That's my opinions. But being unapologetically you, don't ever feel like you have to change who you are for anyone or anything. And that's that's anything. That's with the job, that's with the relationship, that's with the friendship. Like you are you who you are. You bring what you bring to the table. And if people don't like it or people can't accept it, then they're just not for you. So don't ever feel like, you know, you're wrong or you're not wanted or whatever the case is. And people just ain't for you. And that's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Be yourself, okay? And always remember that you are the prize because you are. Duh. Ooh, okay, next topic I wanted to get into our boundaries. Yeah, mm, this one right here. <laughs> Girl, when I tell you I was humble real quick when I had this discussion with my therapist, I was humble real freaking quick. Like, when I thought of boundaries before I had that conversation with my therapist, I would always think of boundaries as, oh, not being afraid to tell people no, or, you know, not allowing people to be in your space or to take your time. But I feel like boundaries has such a deeper meaning and that conversation definitely taught me that. So first of all, in order for any relationship to be healthy and to actually last, you need boundaries. And I feel like a lot of times boundaries have a negative connotation, but for your sanity, for your health, for your peace of mind, boundaries are a thousand percent necessary, okay? And I do want to call out that there is a huge difference between a boundary and a wall. To me, boundaries allow me to give to myself, to fill my cup, and then whatever's a surplus, I can allocate to other people. Say for instance, I have $100, right? Old me would have been like, oh, I have $100. X, Y, and Z had asked me for $20 each, so now I have $60. But now my mindset is, okay, I have $100. That $100 is mine with no questions asked. That $100, oh, it belongs to me. If I'm blessed with 10 more dollars, that 10 more dollars can go towards my friends or my family or whoever's asking me for money. But that initial $100, that is mine. That's an example of how I look at boundaries. It's like everything that you, you give to yourself until you are whole, and then whatever's remaining, you give to other people. That is why we, well, when I pray, I ask for everything in abundance so that I'm not just able to help myself, I'm able to help my family, my friends, people I know, people I don't know, because to me, that's the purpose of me being here. That's the purpose of my impact. That's the purpose of my purpose of being here. So yeah, either way, boundaries are necessary. Make sure you are establishing them and not just establishing them, but make sure you, you practicing them, okay? Make sure you paying attention to them and make sure you just not saying like, oh, you know, whatever the boundary is and then you just know you need to establish your boundaries and you actually have to live by them okay i'm gonna pause real quick so that i can do an eyeshadow look <laughs> sun is setting um what palette am i gonna dig into today oh my god the clouds are going crazy okay i'm using this palette this is my desi and katie dose of colors palette i'm gonna do a neutral eye look so I'm putting this brown on the outer crease. Okay. 
Oh, this color is so beautiful. Oh, yes. The dimension from this brown alone, babe. Okay. And then I'm going to take a darker brown color to deepen it out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and blend with the first brush, with the lighter brown color. I'm just blending the outskirts. I'm always scared using darker colors because I feel like it's so intimidating. But I'm trying to practice with my eyeshadow look, so hopefully it comes out looking good. And then I'm going to take like a sandy color, very light, and sweep that on my eyelid. Very soft glam, very soft. Cute, cute. I'm gonna put a brown, brown eyeliner. So moving along, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is trust. Trust is something that I feel like a lot of us don't take as seriously as it really is. Like trusting someone, there are very few people in this world that I will sit here and say that I trust, okay? When it comes to relationships, I have previously expressed to you guys that the way that I was thinking about trust was incorrect or inconsistent with how I think of it now. Like before I used to think because of like the toxic relationships that I was in, girl, I'm like, y'all gotta earn my trust. Like I can't just be giving it to y'all. I can't just be handing it out. Like, but now I'm like, no, that's not the right way. Like you should provide somebody with your trust or you could, you should trust someone with your trust until they give you a reason not to trust you because that is indeed what god has done god has provided us with his trust he never told us we have to earn his trust so why do we feel like we have to tell other people to earn our trust the way that i think about trust is you should be able to give it to people and people will show you whether they deserved it or not so yeah but trust is super important as i mentioned there are very few people that i will sit here and say that i trust and when i say i trust somebody i don't ever have to question their intentions i don't ever have to question the way they're gonna move but yeah when it comes to trust i feel like we really don't be trusting people and we force trust on people like some people don't even ask for our trust and we just like here you go like i want i want i want to be able to trust you but they didn't even tell us or show us that they were needy of our trust so why are we just doing like why are we just doing the most why a lot of times and i say this often when people show you who they are believe them like a lot of times we may not believe them because it may not be what we expected or whatever the case is but when people show you who they are we have to believe them we need to stop making excuses for people as well 
So a lot of times we may be like, oh, but that's not who she really is. Or I know she's not like that. So why is she moving like that? Why is she moving like that? She's not like that. Why everybody saying she moved like that and she not like that? You know what I'm saying? Stop making excuses for people. Stop it. I have put some powder here. Can brighten it up a little bit more. So yeah, I want everybody to take their trust more seriously, especially in romantic relationships, girl. Because you can't just be out here giving your trust out to everybody just like you can't be out here giving out the cheat to everybody. Like, trust is so valuable and I feel like we don't honor it as much as we should. So I'm going to remind you, girl, everybody doesn't deserve your trust. And you don't deserve everybody's trust. It's a, it's a vice versa thing. So always remember that. Everybody does not deserve your trust. Point blank, period. some setting powder if you need a little bit more let's just step and then blend it out a little so I'm using this lip liner this is chestnut by MAC but I'm not sure if this is dupism. I like to, for my lips to be super dry before I apply my lip because that's when I feel like I get the best application. I could do this brown, brown Ami Cole lip oil. Ooh. This makeup look is giving all the fall feels. Okay, it's giving chocolate brownie, it's giving fudge, it's giving warmth, it's giving comfort, like, oh my God. Uh-huh. Period. And then I'm gonna pop on these lashes. These are my current fave lashes, Iconic Light from House of Lashes. These lashes right here are a dream. So I'm gonna pop these on real quick. I'm telling y'all, these lashes are absolutely perfect. And this is like my fifth time wearing this pair, so. Yeah. But... So here's the final look. I'm absolutely in love with this dark sultry brown warm cozy makeup look i really hope you guys enjoyed watching me do my makeup as well as chitting and chatting about some topics that i feel like i just need to get off of my chest so if you guys did enjoy today's video make sure you guys drop a comment and let me know your thoughts and opinions on anything that was discussed in today's video also let me know if you guys you know how y'all feel about this makeup look okay because i'm definitely wearing it out to dinner tonight so <laughs> As I mentioned earlier in the video, all items used to create this face will be linked down below in the description box. So make sure you guys check that description box. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you never miss any of my future uploads. I love you guys so, so much. Never forget that you are beautiful, you are worthy, you are the prize, okay? You are the prize, and that's um. So I love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Oh,